So, we return to Waterfall. Nine years have passed since the train collision at the station. New trains have come, and they would cause an absolutely horrifying crash. Just a short drive from where I'm sitting right now, it'll happen. This is the story of the 2003 Waterfall train derailment. On January 31st, 2003, an electric service to Port Kembla Wollongong left from Sydney Central at 6.24am. The train was a G-Set EMU made in the 1990s. This particular one was G7, maintained at the Moordale Maintenance Centre. The train was running late, so the driver had sped at multiple parts of the journey, but it wasn't by a lot and not for very long, so luckily nothing big happened. At around 7.10am, the train departed Waterfall Station from the outskirts of Sydney, down to the next station, Helensburg. At 7.15am, as the train was passing through the site of the Waterfall Tunnel, which now was a two-track cutting, the driver had a heart attack and lost control of the train. To make things worse, the guard had fallen into a micro-sleep for as long as 30 seconds. Up ahead, was a sharp curve in a small cutting rated for speeds of 60 kilometers an hour. Meanwhile, the train was going at 117 kilometers an hour. Everything came to a head at Fruz Gully and disaster struck. Good evening, Andrew Lofthouse with ABC News. New South Wales is counting the dead and injured tonight after a train derailment on Sydney's outskirts this morning. The train turned over and crashed onto the ground. The two leading carriages were then crushed by hitting the wall of the cutting, flipping them back upright, causing the cabin leading vestibule to be completely demolished. The original count for people dying was nine, however it was later found out to be seven. In addition, 40 other passengers were injured. It was the worst crash since the Glenbrook train crash of 1999 that killed seven and injured 51. It was extremely difficult for emergency services to get to the site due to its remoteness. The vehicles that got there were M113 APCs from Holsworthy Barracks. But what could have caused this? G7 was a very faulty train and had made a reputation for breaking down among repair crews. The G-sets had a pressure-sensitive pad that had to be pushed down to see if the driver was awake. If it was not pushed down, it would go into emergency braking and stop. The weight of the unconscious driver was enough to defeat the dead man's pedal, so the train did not stop. These trains also featured Electronic Train Management System, TMS for short, and were quite unreliable with both software and hardware. Many of the safety features of the TMS were disabled due to the TMS being faulty. In 2015, a leyline observation video was produced about the crash and dumped onto a streaming platform YouTube. However, it was quite outlandish and has no supporting evidence to back it up. For example, how was it planned exactly for seven people to die, especially since the original count was nine? G7 was scrapped in 2005, and all of the G sets were turned into T1 sets in 2010, with the H sets, also known as Oscars, taking their intercity occupations. Railcorp incorporated emergency door releases onto the Waratah series of trains as a result of inquiries in its crash. Automatic Train Protection ATP could have prevented this crash. ATP had been installed on the Newcastle and Blue Mountains line since the Cowan train disaster in 1990. This crash was a painful reminder of how little progress they had made, not to mention the 2008 Richmond train crash that still showed it. This situation was very similar to the one of 2008 Chatsworth train collision occurred in California, which implemented PTC, and then the 2015 Frankfurt Junction wreck that showed how little progress was made. Not to mention the 2018 DuPont wreck, which still showed it. Which begs the question, will there be more waterfall train crashes? Hopefully not.